I always start DIYs or projects like this and then I'm like halfway through and I'm just like, why did I start it? Why am I doing this? Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Side note, having a white couch and four animals in the house is a no, that is terrible idea. Like this couch has had to be washed many a time already. Like I think I had to wash it within like a day of redoing it. Anyway, firstly, just want to apologize that this video has taken so long to be uploaded for you guys. My perfectionist self was really unhappy with the footage that I got and I kind of brushed it aside in hopes that no one would ask me about the video. But I've had a lot of questions about the video. People being like, where is this DIY video? I want to do it myself. So I have edited it all. I hope you guys really enjoy this DIY. I had so much fun doing it. We all know the beloved Cloud Couch. They are really expensive. So I really, really wanted one, but didn't want the price point that came with it. This was such an inexpensive DIY to do and really easy to do no matter what skill set you have when it comes to sewing and DIYing. I have little to no sewing skills whatsoever. I picked up a sewing, a $20 sewing machine off Facebook Marketplace for this DIY. A girlfriend of mine was actually <laughs> one of my friends. She was so shocked that I actually did this. She was like, Joe would not have sewed this whole thing. Like the last time I used a sewing machine or sewed was I think year nine design technology. If you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you guys don't miss any future DIYs I post. Now to stop me from rambling, I'm just going to, let's go. I picked up this couch behind me off Marketplace for free. Didn't spend a single dollar on this. My, my plan is to redo the upholstery, so pull off all the existing fabric that's on at the moment and replace it with new fabric. As I go along, I will let you know how much things are costing and I will leave below a whole list of the materials I've used as well, how much they have cost me, in what quantities and where I've gotten them from as well. But so far I've only spent, so zero dollars on the couch, $150 worth of material that I picked up from Spotlight and $20 for a secondhand sewing machine that I also found on Facebook Marketplace. going to pull off the old upholstery I was actually just going to go over it with the white fabric that I bought however because this fabric is quite dark and the new fabric I bought isn't that thick I am worried that this color will show through um, the white fabric so I have pulled off the fabric where you will mainly see it, if that makes sense. So I'm basically just doing this bit here, the two side bits, um, and this front bit here. As you can see, I've left this top bit because obviously you will, um, you won't see it because the cushions will be down and the front fabric will cover it. But I did take off that front portion there. I've taken off this side i'm not too stressed about that side bit there i'm unsure if i'm going to take that bit off but i've taken the whole back bit so i'm yet to do this bit but i've left the whole um, back panel of fabric because it doesn't really matter too much i just want it to look as wide as possible in the front because that's where you'll mainly see the fabric um how did i take off the old fabric you may ask with scissors and a stanley knife i literally just made incisions um like in the fabric because i couldn't find the ends of it because everything is tucked under and stapled under so i just had to make incisions and cut out the bits of fabric that i don't want like as you can see here this is attached to this um the bottom of like the seating area so i can't cut this whole fuck off because then there'll be a hole so i've left that front bit on um so yeah that's all i've done i didn't remove any staples or anything like that it was way too hard i also had a thought of wanting to replace the foam that's you know when foam gets really old it starts drying and it almost starts disintegrating but i can't bother and foam is also expensive so i'm trying to keep this 
project at a very minimal cost. Here we go, all the upholstery is off, the old one. Um, so I took off, I ended up taking both side panels off as well. So now it is time to measure up cases, like the pillowcases, and start putting those together. I'm also unsure whether I want to increase the height of the couch or not. I don't know if it's too low to the ground. I kind of like it, but then I don't. So. I also have to figure that out. I think I might just keep it at this height, not put it any higher. I was going to put some legs on it to make it a bit higher, but so indecisive. Why? So next step, um, actually, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what I've done so far. So as you guys saw, I have taken off all the upholstery. I have given the couch a clean as well. I have bicarb soaked all of this as well as vacuumed it. And my cushions have also been bicarbed and vacuumed and they're just air drying in the sun at the moment outside um, and the smaller cushions have been put in the wash and they will just be air dried when they're done now the next step i am going to first start with the front piece of fabric down here which i'm actually just going to attach with safety pin so i have measured this whole front section this side all the way up all the way down to the um, other end as well so we are just going to make that as like a waterfall looking thing. I don't so I actually have no idea how to explain to you guys what I'm doing. But you guys will see shortly. So I've measured that whole front section and it's 2 meters 70 um, from all the way across. Um, and yeah, so here's my piece of fabric there. And basically what we're doing is... All right, we've made some progress. I put that front flap down. Um, I have also safety pinned it on. I just have four safety pins all across there. And by the time the cushions come on the top, I don't think it should move too much. I'm also going to staple gun the sides whenever Ash gets home. So I can steal the staple gun, staple gun the two flaps down there. So I basically just made cuts so they fit all down there perfectly. I have also measured the back bit. Well, my tripod is not loving me. I've also measured the length of the back bit and I have popped the fabric on the back too. I'm still in the middle of tucking stuff in. But just so you guys can see, I've just let it overhang because the width of the fabric is not long enough. I'm going to have to have a second piece to hang from the top to the bottom at the back there to cover it all but if you guys see here it's relatively easy to just tuck everything underneath and obviously you don't need to be too neat about stuff because once the cushions go over the top you're not really going to see it too much and i'm not too fussed about it i might because i can feel a bit of timber in this bit here i might staple gun that to get it more secure um, and I'm trying to get the creases out of that, but so that's what I'm going to do. Just tuck it all underneath. So I've just popped this side, um, arm sleeve on. Um, I've just measured up and over and that was a meter 15. So I've cut out a length of that and I have then just pleated the edges here. Um, I've just pulled it up so it's not, that's why it's not tight. But I've just safety pinned this bit down here and I'm going to pull it off and I'm just going to sew down here, if that makes sense. I hate when people say if that makes sense, but I really hope what I'm saying is making sense. Because it does logically in my head and I don't know if it's actually making sense to you guys or not. Because I obviously want to, you all to be able to replicate this project, but I mean everyone's couch is going to be different. So um, I hope it, the general gist of it makes sense. Um, this is what my sewing job looks like. So I just sewed that hem attachment thing over right there. So now it's created a pocket almost, um, which is absolutely fine. By the time cushions and stuff go on, you're not going to be able to notice those fine shitty details. But that is where we're at. 
here's my little sewing machine that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. Nothing special, but you've got 12 different stitches. It's literally the same as your expensive sewing machine. Um, I did notice that I can't put really thick amounts of fabric through there, like the needle won't go through. So downside of that, but for small scale jobs like this, can't go wrong. Um, if you guys don't have a sewing machine you guys can purchase so you can actually get a really it's really inexpensive as well but they were all sold out when I went to get them but a handheld sewing machine they're about 20 bucks um, and it works the same thing and you just go along and it does the same thing as a sewing machine would but it's just handheld and it's um, more not as expensive as well otherwise you can get iron on like hemming tape so it's like a glue and then you iron it and the heat then joins the two pieces together. So they are two other options if you guys don't have a sewing machine. Back to work. I mean, this is actually so tedious and I am getting a bit frustrated. But I just can't wait for this whole thing to be done and for it to look pretty and yeah. I'm a genuine genius. I've just sewed my first pillowcase. I found a tutorial on YouTube on how to sew a pillowcase without a zipper because I can't be bothered with zippers and like one of those envelopey ones. But the tutorial was like really, um, really hard and you had to cut all these bits of fabric. So I just went and looked at a pillowcase I had at home and all I wanted was the ones where you just fold it in and there's that bit of a lip. Um, I absolutely floored it and I did it. Oh my God, I just sewed my first pillowcase and I'm genuinely very, like I'm so proud of myself right now. I didn't hem it though, so it looks a bit shitty. But in regards to pillowcase, we're good. Um, so I'm gonna go and do all the other ones. It's starting to get dark as well, so I'm sorry if the lighting gets really shitty, but I'll link the video that I, the videos that I've been looking at to sew pillowcases down below. So follow those through. I'm not going to f um, film myself sewing because it's actually horrendous. Um, like if you're a professional sewer, you would be cringing so hard right now. And if you actually saw my sewing, you'd probably want to throw your sewing machine out. Hey Ash, yeah. can you give me a hand? Yeah. <sighs> I did it without you. Oh, shit. You're taking too long. What? I fixed it so it actually fits properly. See, it fits better now. And I reinforced, you know how I, you were like, is that ripping? It was ripping. You got a double stitch? So I went like up and back a few times and now it fits better. I'm just setting a one in, boys. Are you gonna Ash, do a hand? Look at this! Are you gonna do a hand? Check that out! You're gonna be a designer. The stitching looks pretty average, but. I don't know it does. Dope. Good morning guys, it is day two of my couch project. As you can see, I got half of it done yesterday. It looks epic. I'm so excited and happy. Sewing is not my forte. It is the shittiest job of sewing and rather just not very neat. Um, but it is my couch i'm not sewing for anyone so i really don't mind but it is a bit rough around the edges i actually like the raw kind of rustic look of it if you will let me show you guys what i've done as you can see half the couch has been done so i've done the large cushion all around the edges and there we go so that is what we're up to at the moment we still have one more small cushion, the large seat cushion and the back cushion to go. I'm also going to show you guys how I did my pillowcases. I feel like this is a really quick and easy way of doing it. I don't know if I mentioned yesterday, but all the tutorials, I'm sorry the lighting in here is like shocking. Hello shadows. Um, 
the tutorials I found on YouTube on how to make pillowcases were just so complex and I'm really lazy. I, if there's a shortcut, I'm going to find it and I'm going to take the shortcut. So I'm going to show, um, share with you guys the quick way of how I made my pillowcases. You only need one piece of material as well. You don't need to cut small bits and pieces. It is one of those envelope ones um, as well. So it's really, really easy. So get your roll of fabric. So we are doing the big seat pillow. I'm going to lie it down. And then all I do is I grab it. I fold it over. That way, that bottom, um, the bottom of the pillowcase doesn't need to be stitched either. I roll it over and you want to leave probably almost a quarter. Can you guys see me? You guys want to leave an extra, like about a quarter of what the pillow is, um, the length of the pillow extra on the top flap. And that's how we're going to create the envelope of for the pillow. And then you want to fold that back so everything is lined up and square. So now you have that top bit folded. I'm going to line that up with the bottom corner so everything is nice and square. I'm going to grab it some pins. Um, also remember that this is the inside of the pillow because once we start, we'll flip it over and right side out. You guys can iron down the creases, like for example, up the top here. It makes your life a bit easier. But once again, there's a shortcut. I'm going to take it and I'm not going to iron it. So essentially, that will be the top of the pillow that you'll put the pillow into. Um, and yeah, so down that edge and down that edge. So this has been the template that I've been using for all my pillows. Even the long back ones um, as well. Just to make the pillowcase a bit stronger as well, when you guys reach the flap here at the end, like where this bit finishes, if you guys can see, you know, our flap on the top there, I just go back and forwards over this bit um, quite a few times because obviously that's the bit where you have to lift up to put the pillowcase under and the first pillowcase I made, I didn't go back and forth. And as soon as I put the pillowcase in, the thread came out. So just make sure to go back and forwards, um, probably once or twice to help the integrity of that area there. Pillowcase is done. So I haven't turned it inside out yet, but this is what it's going to look like on the outside. Well, this is technically the inside. So you've got that flap, but that's all now sewed down the edges like so. So all we need to do is flip that right side out.